Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, step right up. It's another review from Lights and Gear, and I have a new light from Soulfern today. If the name sounds familiar, SC31, it's because we have already uh, reviewed the SC31 from Soulfern about a year ago, perhaps, at the time that this video is being recorded. But this is the updated version of the SC31. It's the Pro. To look at this box, you wouldn't know that, since, since Sofern is pretty big on, on generic boxes, so they never say anything on their box about what the light is inside. They have changed the design, though, here of their generic box, but other than that, you wouldn't really know too much. But um, this is the SC31 Pro, and uh, the only thing here which says that is this little sticker on the back. So, let's pop open the box here and take a look. This light does have differences between the first SC31, and I did some reviews on that, so if you want to go back in history and take a look, you can certainly. There are some differences between this light and the other, uh, the main one being that it's brighter. Uh, this has a top output of 2,000 lumens, and the original SC31 was a thousand lumens. And um, this also has Endural firmware, which the original did not. So that's perhaps the biggest change between the Pro and the first version. And I have reviewed many lights before, quite a few of them, which feature the firmware. So as far as that is concerned, the SC31 will operate in the exact same way as those other lights do, uh, namely those from Lumentop and so forth, which have used Endural in the past. But again, the differences in each of those lights is what you find in the light itself. It's, um, it's build quality, the LED, the size of the beam, the top output, etc. So those are what um, will differentiate those lights from each other, aside from the fact of them using the same firmware. So here with the SC31 Pro, here's the light. It's a pretty standard length at uh, uh, just uh, four plus inches. Inside the container, the package, not too many accessories, but here is a USB charger. It's actually USB-C, so for those who like the new type of charging technology, you have that with this. And in the packet, just a couple of accessories, O-rings, and a lanyard. The pocket clip, as you can see, is already attached to the light. It also comes with a battery, and that's inside the light when you first receive it. So let's take off the tail cap, check out the spring here, and some nice threading on the end. And the battery they give you is, of course, a Sofern. Surprise, surprise, a 3000 uh, MAH18650. So that's your battery. And it does um, a nice job, of course, of powering the light at 3000 ma. It's uh, not too low in capacity and uh, not the highest, so it's right in the middle. This light also accepts other types of 18650s, um, namely flat tops, IMRs, that kind of thing, or this is an INR, but uh, again it's the flat top, the, the uh, famous pan, pan, uh, the, 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 the Samsung, whether it's a Panasonic or not, Samsung uh, 30Q, so it uses this battery just as well as it does uh, the uh, Sofern that they supply. Uh, for the purposes of demonstration here, I will put the 30Q in. And if you've had a chance to look at the light here as I've been flashing it around, no pun intended, uh, here is your knurling, which is um, pretty good. And we'll stop your hands from slipping if they're wet. Here's the name right here, as you can see. Other side is the USB port. So that's right there. As soon as you attach, attach the USB in there and to a um, charging current, 
you'll get a red light here. Notice that it's green right now. Whenever the battery is powered in the light, it shows up as a faint green. But as I say, if you, uh, when you go to plug the uh, USB in, this will be bright red. And you can see a picture of that on my written review at lightsandgear.com. And when the charge is finished, it then turns a bright green. So, here is the head. By the way, the LED, I haven't mentioned it yet, is a luminous SST40, which is a pretty nice LED. And that is, of course, right dead center among the uh, reflector here, which is smooth. No orange peel in there, so you do get a nice beam. And uh, I believe the peak beam distance is about 200 meters, so not too bad at all. Tail stands, of course, beautifully just like that. So, as I was saying, when you put the battery in, you'll get the green light right there. And turning it on, turning it off, is as simple as pressing the button, if that's all you want to do. But, of course, there's an awful lot you can do with the firmware. When you get the light, the default is for it to step. So with that, of course, you would press the side switch and then it will ramp up and then press it again and it'll ramp down. So with every press, it'll go up, release, press again, it'll start to ramp down. And this is the default. And I believe there were seven outputs on here which were already programmed, which is like a moonlight, and you can sort of figure them out however you want. Moonlight, low, medium, medium, I think there were maybe two highs, and then a turbo. So it goes anywhere from, from about two lumens up to 2,000. But usually, though, when you first get it, some of these, uh, some of the highs and the lows are not programmed fully. And that's part of what you can do with the firmware is to set that to your own liking. So when you first get it, it won't go as low as it is right now. So when I press it like that and hold for a second, I get the lowest mode. And right now this is set at the lowest it can possibly be, which would be like one lumen or maybe half a lumen. But when you first get it, it won't be set that low. It'll be like two or three lumens. And consequently, the highest mode won't generally be on 2,000 lumens either. So what they call the floor and the ceiling, you can set those. So I have done so by setting the floor to as low as it will go and basically setting the turbo to as high as it will go. And then of course the other, uh, the other bit of interface on it, the other interface option <coughs> which you can choose is ramping. And of course, uh, that'll be just to have a smooth, that'll be a smooth ramp. Instead of, a, instead of a stepped ramp, it's a smooth ramp. And you can change that anytime you like by just, by just um, clicking three times. So if I turn the light on like this and then click three times, it gives a tiny flash. And now it's in the smooth ramp. So there's no step involved in here at all. I kind of prefer the step in a way. So I'll click three times again, a tiny flash, and then I'll be back into the step the way I was before. So let's um, just turn the light off here. I mean, of course, there are, as I say, there are all kinds of settings on here with the firmware that you can do. And if you've seen any of my other videos using the Enduro, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I will just briefly open the manual here for a second. Here is the little schematic diagram which they give, which just gives you a very quick overview of what you can do. It has, of course, all the strobe modes and the blinky modes that the other lights with this firmware do. Of course, you can do the automatic, uh, you can do the electronic lockout, you can make it so it works tactically, momentary, and it also has the muggle mode for lending it to someone who isn't so familiar with flashlights. 
so that um, all the bells and whistles won't confuse them. It just does a, a very simple operation in that mode. Um, it has all the strobes down here from the candle flash to the lightning storm to the tactical strobe, the party strobe, and the bike flash. And um, <clears throat> over on the blinky side it has the battery check which you can do anytime. Uh, you have to have the light off to do that and then you uh, click three times and then it'll start flashing the battery voltage at you. So it'll just count out the voltage that way and then press the button to shut it off. Um, it does the sunset mode and uh, it also has the beacon and it has the actual air temperature to tell you what the temperature is. The ambient temperature from wherever the light happens to be, it'll give you the air temperature. You have to kind of um, set that in a way or else it might not be completely accurate. Uh, that's the basics of the light as far as the modes that it does do and it explains that a little bit more over here and um, it uh, advises of course that turbo should only be used for short periods of time and here are all the blinkies and so forth that I was just talking about a moment ago which goes into more detail about that anyway um, let's press the button here turn it back on and I'll turn this light off and we'll just do a, uh, a quick look at the beam here so I believe yeah this is the lowest mode that I have it set at right now so this is the lowest mode right now and it's just low enough to be able to see the manual in front of me and just a little bit on the wall in front of me over here so press it and it will go up to the regular low mode right now I have this set so that it has about five or six modes on it so this would be like low this would be like medium I think this might be a, a second a secondary medium this is high oh wait a minute it didn't wait for me to go it kind of started going back down again let me just go up to the top so here's turbo and uh, very bright camera often doesn't really show the brightness as well as it could but it's uh, super super bright on the wall there of course I'll take it outside in a moment and show you the outdoor pics that I took the head is starting to get a little bit warm right now so it's on turbo right now so if I press it it'll start to descend again so there's high so there's turbo high medium medium low and moonlight so once again one two three four five six so I have it set at six right now and of course if you're at all familiar with the firmware you can set almost as many modes as you could ever possibly want I mean you could set up to I think it's 150 if you can imagine that 150 different steps on these lights so every step would be only infinit infinitesimal as far as the um, as far as the output going up or down so you can have a whole bunch of steps if you really want to or you can have just two or three steps if you really want to so that's the joy of having the Enduro firmware and the kind of customization that you can do with that with the firmware so it's pretty amazing actually and uh, I do appreciate all my lights that do have the firmware not that I use of course all the blinky modes and all that stuff that's kind of like for fun and kind of like uh, show and tell almost but uh, follow me outside here and uh, we'll take a look at those uh, beam shots in the uh, in the dark wilderness so follow me out there So there are your outdoor shots 
You can see more of those on my website at the written review for this for this light at lightsandgear.com. So you can check that out with the link with the link below. Um, if you want to take a quick look at the at the strobe modes here, um, you have to be in the off position to do that, and then do two clicks and then a hold and click, and it automatically goes into the strobe modes. Uh, here's the first one here and uh, here's the candle, oh no this is lightning storm so that's the lightning and then uh, this one here is a uh, is the candle flash and here's one of the strobes I think this is the I think this might be the tactical strobe and here's the party strobe and that is a regular strobe. I was trying to find out where the bike flash was, and I don't seem to be... Oh, here, oh, here's the bike flash. Okay, this was the bike flash, so I mistaken this for one of the other strobe modes a minute ago. This is, this is bike. Right, and that's the party strobe. Okay, anyway, enough of those. So you get the idea what it can do in those modes. And, uh, anyway, if you have any questions, obviously, on this light, let me know below and we'll, um, discuss it. If you'd like to pick one up, you can get it on Amazon for a nice price. There is a link below where you can do that, and the same link is in my written review at lightsandgear.com. The SC31 Pro from Sofern is a nice EDC flashlight, and, uh, see how bright that, uh, that green is on there? I uh, kind, of, kind of failed to mention that before. I did say that the green was on anytime there's power to the battery, but as soon as you press the button, the, the light comes on pretty green or in a nice bright green like that, so it's very easy to see in the dark. And you can find the button easily in the dark as well uh, since it's lit up a little bit when you're outside before you turn it on so you can see the switch very easily and feel it easily as well. That rubber texture is very easy to find but as soon as it comes on it puts the light on there but I believe there's also a setting in here uh, for turning this off if you don't want it on and it also does a breathing light here if you don't want this on like that or if you want it more than that there's also a breathing light um, you can do so anyway again that's the SC31 Pro uh, take a look at it on Amazon. Pick it up for a good price. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and uh, we will see you next time. And uh, take care.